It's the Right Word Awakened, an invigorating engagement of words, spirit, mind, and self. With word stylist Emily, you can call her E. Claudette Freeman. Reimagine your words, rewrite your power, recreate your life, renew your story, right here on the Right Word Awakened podcast. It's all part of the Right Word Awakened movement, an Emily Claudette Freeman vibe. Hey, guys, we're continuing our conversation on how you dream and how you dream. And I know that's not grammatically correct. It should be how are you dreaming, and I get that. But, you know, let's just be cute and call it how you dream it. And so we started this conversation a couple of weeks ago, and it's based on a text message I got from a friend of mine, Dr. Vicki Johnson. We were having one of those text conversations and um, I think sometimes I text Vicki something and it says, okay, she, she needs to hear something deep and profound at this moment. And so she responded to me and the text message said um, something to, uh, to the effect to, to dream so big that you allow God to blow your mind. And it, it made me pause and think about just how big um, I had been dreaming, and I realized that for a lot of years and in a lot of instances, I downsized my dreams to fit somebody else's definitions or to fit the circumstances and to fit the situation, um, whether that situation was uh, financial or relational or just status in life at the moment. And so her text really made me think about how we handle those dreams that relate to our vision and our goals and our purpose and part of our, our route to destiny, if you will. So this morning, joining us to have part of that conversation with us um, is a young woman that I've, I've uh, admired and been kind of, I guess you would call it social media stalking for a number of, a number of years, and her name is Geralda Larkin. She is a visionary strategist, pastor, life coach, author, and teacher with a special anointing to steer visions to reality, so you knew we had to talk to her, right? For over 16 years, she's amassed a sizable portfolio of successful businesses, ministries, and social programs across South Florida that have either launched or expanded under her leadership. She's been named one of Legacy Magazine's 40 Under 40 Black Leaders of Today and Tomorrow and one of 100 Outstanding Women in Broward County, she manages people and programs in the spirit of excellence and effectively executes strategic plans to yield game-changing results. She brings the word to life through her, her um, Bible studies full of revelations, spirit-filled seminars, and life-changing conferences, which merge faith and the marketplace and empowers entrepreneurs to impact the world through supernatural enterprises. Um, she's also passionate about building future leaders, serving as founder of the Broward Etiquette Academy, which hosts an annual business etiquette luncheon for students with special needs at United Community Options of South Florida. She's mentored hundreds of teenage girls, having served as past director of the Girls Encouragement Ministry of Soul Harvest Creative Praise Church, which hosted an all-girls conference for five consecutive years to empower girls to be queens in life and servant leaders in their communities. Her motto is, and here's where we're going to start. Greater works you will do because greater is in you. Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation, Geraldo. How are you? Thank you, Claudette. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you for having me. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. When you hear people read your bio, you're like, okay, that's right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> you're like, well, I should be tired and somewhere less than. Um, <laughs> Amen. But greater, greater work, that's a wonderful place to start when I think our conversation as it relates to, to dreams because would you say that having a dream and a dream that's so big that only God can blow your mind in it, it's part of that greater works um, mandate? Right. You know, Claudette, this is a very timely topic, and I talk a lot about vision and dreaming. Um, And, uh, you know, Vicki Johnson is also someone I admire as well. So um, very timely quote. 
I wrote a book called um, Seven Supernatural Success Strategies for Living a Transformed Life. And the number one strategy that kicked off that book was to dream. And dreaming is so important because where there's no vision, the people perish. That's Proverbs mm-hmm. twenty eight nineteen. You need a dream to avoid perishing, to avoid stumbling through life, just wandering aimlessly without a purpose. Because we were all created by God with a purpose. And he loves you enough to want more for you. He wants to do exceedingly and abundantly above Anything you can ever ask for, anything you could ever imagine, God wants to do more than that. But it starts with you and a dream. You have to dream. you got to have a vision. And so I teach a lot about what vision is so people can really understand. It's not just when you go to sleep and you have a dream and you wake up, you know, with right. this indigestion or something. No, we're talking deeper than that. We serve a deep God, right? So I really have to break down what vision is. Vision is a picture of the future that people are willing to work for. You got to see it to believe it. Come on. So Mm. vision is not just a goal. It's not just an objective. It's not just something on your to-do list. Vision is a dream that God literally puts and plants in your heart, and it's bigger than yourself. But when you accomplish that dream, it will bring glory to God and change people's lives. And so wow. I, um, I always quote Bishop T.D. Jakes. He says, if you can conceive the invisible, the invisible, you can achieve the impossible. You conceive, that means to visualize something, to picture it. Cindy, Dr. Cindy Trim, she says, your feet can never take you where your mind has never been. So that vision, yeah. it starts. With a, when I coach visionaries, I coach um, kingdom visionaries, and specifically in our faith, in the Christian faith, it, it starts with an encounter with Jesus Christ. Um, it's, it's only through Christ that you can truly see because Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. So whoever follows me uh, will never walk in darkness, but you'll have the light of life. And so you need the light to truly see. And that light of Christ, it illuminates your heart. It's the light of your life. And in Christ, you find your identity, your purpose. You you find freedom. And so then you now can become the light of the world. So I call my clients kingdom visionaries, a follower of Christ, who actually receives a revelation of their purpose in his kingdom. The purpose is there is that revelation, that vision, that disclosure from God to his people. And so without that, you really do perish. You really do perish. So this is so important, a very timely topic, Claudette. So, you know, talking about biblical, and I think this happens, you, you know, in, in the Christian and the non-Christian faith so often, this is what happens, Gerald, and, and I think people have probably uh, talked and worked with people like this, um, and, and I've been there where you have, a, you have this dream, you, you see it. You see that vision. You you mapped it out. You know you got stuff on the wall. You got stuff on a vision board. You've written stuff mm-hmm. in your journal. Um, but everything that you see is so much larger than your current moment. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is we take our eyes off of the vision and we put our eyes on the current moment, and then we step away from that dream. And wow. so, and when that happens, is that not part of us, uh, maybe not intentionally, but moving ourselves into that place of perish? Mm. Well, let me say this. We got to understand that uh, vision is seeing from the eye of faith. It, it's a mm-hmm. lens, and faith is that lens, and you've got to have faith not in yourself, not in people, not even in your gifts and your skills and abilities. Your faith has first, it first has to be anchored in your creator, 
the one who has this master plan about your life, about the whole universe and the flow of energy that's going on through each and every person he created in this world, right? So you have to see from that lens, and you got to have faith in God, faith in his word, faith in his promises, faith in what he says about you, and when you believe in your heart, it's not about just believing just to believe it. you got to believe it in the core of who you are, believing in your heart that God does not lie, that whatever he said to you, whatever he revealed to you, whatever dream he's given you, then he has already blessed it, he's provided for it, he's planned for it, he's prepared for it, and he's also protecting it, okay, because he already calls it done in the spirit realm. It's already done in his mind, okay? So, We now have to believe that with all of our heart because things will start to happen. We begin, um, if we're not careful, like you said, we start zeroing in on our present circumstances. We start zeroing in on our current insecurities and our inabilities and what our bank accounts say and what people say, Mm -hmm. what we've done in the past. And so now unbelief begins to set in. And faith. Come on. If you don't have faith, then your dreams can't come true. That faith needs to be in God. It can't be in a worldly, in some worldly system or some um, um, earthly standard, okay, because God is not a man. He shall not lie. So all of these things, uh, your gifts can play a role in your dream come in the past, but you can't put your confidence in your, uh, uh, in your abilities. You can't put your confidence in people. You can't put your confidence in what you see in the natural eye. So you have to first see from the eye of faith and see God. You see God over all of that because in God there is no failure. God alone can also handle those things that you're not even aware of, that you're not even, uh, that are things that are beyond your control, things that are coming down the pike. Come on, Claudette, as you begin to roll out and do something according to your purpose and then the the stuff just comes out of nowhere, all the the, the, the chaos that comes with just moving out in just life. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) if your vision isn't big enough to put, the fear of God in you, then it's not of God. Come on, it has to uh, uh, be bigger than you. I need you you to just wait, wait. I just need you to say that one more (laughs) thing. I just need you to put that on rewind. Because people, Uh you know what, here's the truth of the matter. Even even as believers, and and I will honestly admit, I've I've struggled with that, that your dream has to be so big that it scares you, Mm -hmm. that, that, that it puts the fear of God in you. So, so I want you to, to hone in on that point right there, that that God is going to give you something so big that when you look at it, you absolutely say, oh, no, I can't do that. And then that's the thing you go do. <laughs> you are so right. And, that, and that's what people need to understand, that anything, you are made in God's image and in his likeness, right? So you were created to rule, reign, and dominate in this world, okay? So you're going to get dreams. You're going to get visions and you're going to do great things. But when you know it's a God vision, when you know it's something that God has literally dropped from heaven into your heart, it should have three distinct components. And I'm going to break this down for you. Number one, it should absolutely scare you. If your vision doesn't terrify you, then it's too small. Okay. A God vision, it should be so huge that you're going to fail apart from him. You're going to fail unless God steps in, okay? You have to get that, nah, not me kind of feeling, okay? You got to think about that thing and you ask yourself, you know what I'm saying, can I really do this? Because if God doesn't do it, okay, and if if, if you can only do it, then praise the Lord, you're talented, go, go, you know, go be great. But when you get that God vision, you literally – have to stand back and say it's not possible in God, but but with God, all things are possible. So he wants all the glory out of your life. So ask yourself, how big is my vision? Okay. If it's not big enough, it's too, it, it, then it's, you know, if it's not scaring you, then it's not big enough. Now, another thing about knowing a God vision is that it absolutely requires other people. It It cannot be done alone. If your vision doesn't include others, then it's too narrow. 
It's too small, okay? Having a vision doesn't mean you against the world. It's not just your baby, okay? Not a God vision. It has to include other people. God is going to raise up a multitude of people to embrace and catch the vision that he's implanted in your heart, okay? So when you rise up, you got to raise others up with you. Okay? You, don't, uh, you don't have to know everything. God is going to send people strategically uh, 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 to help you birth out that vision because God is all about community. God is all about unity. Okay? So number three, a God vision always gets done. Okay? It always gets done. A vision without action is just a daydream, but action without vision is a nightmare. You need both, okay? And too many, too many people, they just talk about it, Claudette. Uh, uh, they talk about what they're going to do, but they never produce any results. But a God vision always gets done. It's not just about talk because it's an agonizing thing in your belly. It's like mm-hmm. uh, it pulls you up at night. It, may, it takes away yes. your sleep and your peace because you got to start walking in the direction that your creator is pulling you to. It pushes you to keep going. It's like you take one step at a time to accomplish the vision that God has birthed in your heart because vision produces forward action, okay, because right. faith without works is dead. So that's how you know that it's a God vision, all right? It terrifies you. It always requires other people. But it always gets done. It always gets done. So know the difference, okay? It's fine to put a whole bunch of things on your vision board. It's great that you have great ideas because we're made in God's image. We're his creation, and so we are going to think and have great dreams. But a God dream, oh, man, it, it's, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's supernatural, and it requires other people. It requires the full force of the kingdom of God, his people, to come together to make it happen. And it gets done. It gets done. Yes. So. Yes, yes. Let's take a quick break right here, and then we'll be right back. I want to talk a little bit more about um, what what the the ignoring your dreams and casting aside your vision looks like in your life, and how to how to break that. So let's take a quick break, and then we'll be right back on the Right Word Awaken podcast. Don't you dare move. There's so much more to engage on the Right Word Awakened and Emily Claudette Freeman vibe. We'll be right back. When you were young, you'd scribble a story on notebook paper and proudly read it to an audience of stuffed animals. Just like that, you planted the seed of being a published author. Let that vision grow with Pecan Tree Publishing, a self-publishing company designed by authors for authors. Pecan Tree Publishing works with authors in an array of genres and our inclusive packages featuring editing, printing, publicity, and marketing. Get additional information at www.pecantreebooks.com. Now back to the show to employ reimagined words and stories in the strategic plotting of your life journey. The Right Word Awakened. Before the break, uh, we were talking uh, about where there is no vision, where you have no dreams, uh, the people perish. And it, it reminded me of a quote by Langston Hughes that says, um, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Um, and so it, it, it holds true to that same biblical understanding of where there is no vision, people perish. But perish looks like certain things in our life where we cast aside um, our dreams. And, and I think you hinted to some of that uh, when, you were, when you were talking about that, that, that agonizing thing in your belly. And so I think a lot of times when you have something so spiritual that, that it's, it's in your belly, you feel it in your heart, everything in your body is ignited around this thing that you know you're supposed to do, that you know you're called to do. When you don't do it, Gerard, do certain things set in and then become um, active in our lives, like stagnant, being stagnant, or what are some of those things in working with clients you, you kind of recognize, okay, this is somebody that's not been paying attention to their dream, that's not been following their vision, they're they've decided to do something else in the dream and the vision keeps trying to call them back. 
In my book, uh, Train, Transform, Transition, it's a strategic approach to the life you deserve. I dedicate a whole chapter, Claudette, on vision, and I break down the meaning of the scripture you read. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Another translation says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. Okay, mm-hmm. So the word vision is translated revelation, and other passages of Scripture associate vision with a word from the Lord. So what King Solomon is really saying in Proverbs 28 19 is that where there is no vision, where there is no revelation, where there's no word from the Lord, the people perish. So perish, um, uh, it means to stumble through life. It means yeah. to cast off restraint. It's like a blind person just bumping into things, getting hurt, Everything. going around in circles mm-hmm. with no sense of direction or no destination. Vision keeps us from running wild and going off yes. God's predestined course for us. And God doesn't wish for no man to live like that. He doesn't wish for no man to perish. He wants us to have and experience everlasting life. If we make the free will choice to accept the gift of salvation by means of Christ, who is the light of the world, by him we see, right, we receive the benefits of true sight, of being able to see, the ability to see, to have vision. And so then in that state, we get to make decisions that will lead us to that life of abundance. Okay, so not only do we get to experience everlasting life in eternity after we die, but if we're obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit here and now, we get to appropriate the full force of heaven now. We get to experience the manifestation of the kingdom of God now. That's the vision for my ministry, Claudette. I want life on earth as it is in heaven. I want to experience mm-hmm. the best that God has for me, the fullness of what God has for me, and that's going to require me to dream. It's going to require me to take action on that dream. It's going to require me to not cast it away. Otherwise, I get, I'm walking around through life just stumbling. I'm not operating in my purpose. I'm not operating at my full capacity. I'm not operating right. in a place of joy, of peace, of freedom, because yes. God created me with a purpose, and he wants to be able to impart his dreams, his revelations, his word into my heart so that I can see it and I can take action on it. I can run with it. And that in that running, in that place of operating in your purpose, then you're truly experiencing in heaven on earth. I don't know anybody that wants to not experience heaven, experience joy, experience peace, supernatural peace, that even when my life is not all perfect and pretty and I'm going through some things, I'm still I'm still experiencing that supernatural peace that surpasses my understanding because I'm operating from a place of vision. I'm operating and I'm, um, I'm manifesting the dreams that God has given me for my life. I, and it's it's when you don't see someone operating that you will see um, the characteristics of someone just going around in circles, still bumping into things, still not producing at their full capacity, still confused, still operating from a place of just chaos. No, there's no peace in their spirit. And so it's so sad. God does not want that for us. It's not saying that you're not going to heaven. Okay, it's just saying you're not experiencing the fullness of heaven on earth so that's a big so this deal. that looks like you see people jumping from project to project one thing finishing. to another mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or you hear them say things like i'm i'm still trying to find myself i'm on i'm on this mm-hmm. continual journey mm-hmm. and it's absolutely imperative that you find out what your purpose is because they, we don't have a lot of time a lot of people think that we are going to live forever no you're not you're not going to live forever. You're not promised tomorrow, right? And so right. why not live a life of purpose every day? Take action on the very thing that gives you life, that brings you joy, that brings you peace, and your purpose brings you life. And that thing is that thing in your belly that I was talking about that agonizes you to start uh, walking in it because your body knows I don't have a lot of time, okay? We're, we're yet perishing in this life, and your spirit who lives forever wants you to start embarking on the very thing that you were created to do. 
And so when someone's just just um, just you know confused, and when I have clients that come to me and say, Geraldo, you know, all I know is that something you said activated me, and I just know that you probably have the the thing that can speak. To, to my heart and then put make it make sense and then go off into that direction. They took a step, and that, and there are steps that you have to um, employ when you uh, sense a God vision, when you sense that God has given you something. There, there's a number one kingdom essential that I always leave with a client. The first thing you do when God gives you a God vision, when you get a God vision, is to give it back to him. Give it back to him. Mm. One of another proverbs that I stand on, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. That means to recognize that God gave it to you. Recognize that it came from him. Recognize that you need him. Recognize that you, this, is too big, this is too big for you. Acknowledge God, and he will make your path straight. When you acknowledge God, okay, he promises to give you direction. He promises to steer you to, the, to, the, to your destiny. He promises to, to, to take care of everything you need for what he just imparted in your belly. And cultivating a vision is not overnight. It's not overnight. It's not something that you just do. It requires purposeful action. That means you got to be intentional. It requires you to be persistent and determined. You got to have patience. That means you got to endure. Okay, you can't just pick it up and just drop it and think that it's going to come to full manifestation. No. Okay, that's why God tells you to write it down. That's why He tells you, you know, I'm saying to write the vision and make it plain. Because you need to take it out of your spirit and put it down on right. paper so you can see it, so you can kind of mm-hmm. look at it. That's yeah. why those vision boards are so important. Right. you got to keep focusing your attention on that thing. So when I got a client that comes to me and they're, you know, because vo- um, purpose is very much voice activated, like I said, a God vision is not intended for, for you to be by yourself on this thing. It's going to take other people to help pull it out and so one of the blessings of being a pastor and being a coach um, is that you get to speak God has anointed your voice to speak into certain people speak into the hearts in the town in the hearts of people and it in their 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 ba- the baby leaps on the inside of them right and that's an awesome right. feeling yes. so yes. You, you know so when you have a God vision write it down and, and start focusing on it but and take time to reflect on that thing and give God praise but then you got to make a plan Okay, you got to come up with a plan, and to do that, you got to have wise counsel. You have to have wise counsel. Without counsel, okay, those purposes, um, the Bible says, are disappointed. But in a multitude of counselors, all right, they are established. So I serve as one of multitudes of counselors assigned to visions and dreams that God has given His people for a certain season and time. And that's what, yeah. that's my passion. That's my mission okay. is to help steer visions to reality. So it's once so, you get that plan and you seek why, I'm sorry, go ahead, Clem. <laughs> I can so, go off the days talking about vision. We're actually uh, running out of time for this, for this segment, but I'm sure I'll be coming back for a part two. So don't worry y'all. Cause I can see you already rolling your eyes at, at your laptop and at your phone and everything, giving you that crazy look. She's coming back. Don't worry. But before um, before we wrap up, I want you to do two things. One, tell people how they can connect with you, get your book, okay. um, you know, perhaps connect with you as a coach. And then for this segment, I want you to just kind of give us uh, some final thoughts. First, the way you get in contact with me is on my website. Everything is on my website, GeraldaLarkins.com, G-E-R-A-L-D-A-L-A-R-K-I-N-S.com. And you'll be able to link to my social media, which is also Geraldo Larkins on Facebook, Instagram, um, on YouTube as well. You can also t- um, subscribe to our our um virtual resource library, LegacyGlobal.tv. There you're not only sewing into the ministry, but you get to have access to all of our seminars, all of our um, virtual lessons that we give to, to members of our community. So reach out to me, and I look forward to circling back with you at the next time with, with Claudette. Final thoughts, um, without vision, people perish. And make up in your mind that today will be the last day that I loosely stumble through my life. 
Today will be the last day that I am confused, that I'm walking around um, the mulberry tree over and over and over again <laughs> without any source of um, direction um, or destination or purpose. Make up in your mind today that this will be the last day and you begin to seek God for the vision um, that he's implanted in your heart. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. She's coming back for part two, and I am excited, excited about that. We always like to end um, the shows with an aim, an affirmation, an intention, and a your move. And for this episode, the affirmation is, I walk boldly, knowing I am the manifestation of the most magnificent dream of all creation dreamed and formed by the creator. Our intention is I purposely dream, plan, strategize, and work to see my dream become purpose and impact destiny. In your move, your action step is to create a list of five things you can do towards birthing your dreams, two immediate things, two near future things, and one long-term thing. And, of course, if you want these emails to you, just drop us a line at Right Word Awaken at equalitliterary.com, and we will talk to you next time right here. You've been listening to The Right Word Awakened, an invigorating engagement of words, spirit, mind, and self. With word stylist Emily, you can call her E. Claudette Freeman. Want more information? Visit www.eclaudetteliterary.com. For sponsor, guest, and other show information, email rightwordawakened at eclaudetteliterary.com. Until next time, tell your words to wake up.